Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today's guest is Tiana Ramirez, and she is an owner over at the Fred Astaire Dance Studio. Tiana, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Adam, for having me. <laughs> so, hey, thank you for making some time for us. Uh, correct me if I'm yes. wrong. You're in Vegas and you're at a dance competition, yes? Yeah, we're at the Fun Stair World Championships. It's held every year wow. here in Vegas, and it is a cool 120 degrees. So, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's, that's amazing. Let's just, oh, and by the way, you're going to the, I know you, Juliana is the one that introduced you to Mission Matters and to, and we're covering the SRQ Women's Expo for her. And I believe you're heading out to that too, right? Yeah, headed out this weekend as one of the VIP vendors. So super looking forward to networking with women of all different diversities and with different backgrounds and networking in general. So super excited about that. So you're just not busy at all, are you? Vegas? Never. <laughs> Sleep later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll I'll take that one. Thank you. I'll take that one with me. Um, well, let's. I, I do want to go. I want to get into more about what you're doing in dance, of course. Also, as an entrepreneur. But before we get into all that, I mean, where did all that start for you? Like, where'd your love for dance and like how were you brought into that, that culture? So thank you for asking because it's uh, very interesting. I wasn't fortunate enough, like growing up, to be able to dance. I just always mm -hmm. kind of admired it from the sidelines. And uh, I took a dance partnering class in college to get my GPA up. I'm like, I need something mm. to pick this thing back up. And I fell in love with it and graduated with a degree in filmmaking, actually. And then I saw an ad in the newspaper for ballroom dancers. And I said, wait, mm. you can get paid to dance? And it was Fred Astaire, and they trained you. So they didn't, you didn't have to have prior dance experience. You just had to have desire and availability and just people skills. So right away, I mm. went into a training class, and that was 15 years ago. I haven't turned back. Get out of here. And that was right yeah. in college. So you, that's amazing. Late what, bloomer. <laughs> well, I don't know if I'm going to say that. A late bloomer would be me because I still haven't started. So, like, what attracted you to, like, I want to stay in those early days a little bit longer because I find it pretty interesting that you started, obviously, in college, and then you found an opportunity as well. And then, obviously, at some point, you it became a profession, which you're still uh, extremely passionate about. Like, in the beginning, like, what hooked you in? Like, how did you know that you were supposed to do this? I think it was once I started to speak without words and using my mm -hmm. body and being able to realize that like physical, emotional, spiritual connection, which is something that Fred Astaire stands on. And when I was able to like experience that, that was like a drug, like no other. I'm like, Whoa, I am, wow. this is all me. And I didn't, I, I had to know more. I didn't want to leave it. I was the last person in class. And so just being exposed to that and fully being open to it and listening mm. to people along the way really made a big difference. Mm. Did your original instructors, did they know, like, did they know at first they're like, hmm, this Tiana, like she, she's, she might be a lifer. Did they know? I'm just so curious. I don't think they knew. They just told me, look, all you need is desire. If you have desire, the sky's wow. the limit. And mm. I'm like, okay, well, I definitely have the desire and I'm willing to do what it takes, but Mm. That would be a very interesting question, Adam, to actually go back and ask my first instructor. So now, I think you should. You I know I really <laughs> do to. think you should because that's a well. It's interesting because like when you see somebody, because I as an instructor, I'm sure they've seen many people that maybe had some promise or otherwise or this or that. But we work with a lot of students or otherwise. Like, but do, do, do they right. know? I'm curious because you said you stayed late and all these other things. Interesting. Did you, like, there must have been some affinity for the Fred Astaire brand, like, in general. Like, how, how did all that take place for you to kind of get started there and then obviously grow through the ranks and then at some point have your own studio? Like, how did that part of it work? Well, kind of super embarrassing. I didn't know Fred Astaire before I started. I wasn't oh, aware. Oh, come of on. Like, oh. I know. I know. Oh, so my shaming. heart. <laughs> I'm not, no. I'm not Fred Astaire but, shaming you. That's a new thing. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> but afterwards, but once I was exposed to that world, I watched mm. his movies and learned about his background and mm. his dance partners, his favorite partners, his least favorite partners, his story in general. And really quickly, I need to share that. Oh, no, please. He was on a flight actually out of, I don't want to quote the city, but he was yeah. on one of his last flights in a wheelchair 
and he was going through. And one of the flight attendants said, hey, Fred Astaire, my God, I've watched all your movies since I was little. And he got up nah. out of his wheelchair and he danced around the box with her right there in the airplane aisle. Stop. Like, incredible. Yeah. Like, so I think that's what, I mean, I didn't know him personally, but the way he structured the the process that it takes to learn how to dance, mm-hmm. I'm a product of it. And most of us are through Fred Astaire. Like, we learned the way he patented this program. And mm-hmm. if you stick with it, it works. It makes you a better dancer. You You grow in so many different ways. And I just believed in his story. Great dancers were are trained, not born. So Mm. I was like, hey, give me the training. I'm ready. Talk to me a little bit more about that, because what I like about this is there's a process. Like, there's a process. I feel like that might be a little bit of a myth, what you just kind of dispelled was saying that you have to be born a great dancer. You have to be this or that. But I feel like like many things, there's misinformation and there's levels, right? Like and and amounts Absolutely. of time you want to dedicate to get to whatever particular level you choose to, right? Like t- talk Absolutely. about the process and talk about what that's like. Mm-hmm. So I started with a training class and the training class was about two weeks and it was kind of taking me through basic movements in the, the popular social dances and different rhythms. And I didn't know music. I didn't know dances. I was like, hey, I just took this class. I really want to get better at it. So I equate it to like karate. So if you're going through karate, there's different belt levels. You start out this belt and then you graduate, you go into this belt and you continue. And there's a natural progression of learning, just like in anything. So if I'm learning a language, I'm starting off learning the words. Mm-hmm. And then I learn the phrases then I make sentences and eventually I'm speaking in a fluent conversation. So mm-hmm. that's kind of his process is not necessarily that you get it in chunks, but you're getting it at a level that you need for that time. Mm-hmm. And then there's a progression that you go to next. And there's checks along the way, checks and balances everywhere. So are we ready? Are we ready to go to the next? And as an instructor, you have to go through every single level as you teach your students the same. So mm. it's the proof is right there if you, you work through those different levels. What do you enjoy about being an instructor? Like, what are some of the things that... Oh, um, my gosh, so many yeah. things. <laughs> when you see people connect to the music that's playing and on a different level when you see people actually re-fall in love with themselves or Mm. they find love or people who have lost their love and they don't really know what to do with their lives and they come in and they find this sense of community and this achievement and accomplishment and to be able to take somebody who is an absolute non-dancer, three left feet and all, Mm. and and turn them into dancers is is the most rewarding thing ever. Kind of look in the mirror sometimes, I'm like, whoa, this is is work? Like, how does this work? I'm changing people's lives. Like this is wow. truly, truly incredible. Wow. And to see the progress too, huh? Like to see somebody yes. come in, I, I'm guessing like you see that same look of that, like maybe a little bit of fear, maybe a little bit of this, maybe a little bit, maybe oh, yeah. their, their partner dragged them in. Quiet, or who knows, you've seen oh, yeah. Every single thing. And then they, they start to loosen up a little bit or so who knows, whatever their particular journey is. That must be so much fun. Yeah, it's it's absolutely incredible. And I think mm-hmm. that there's not many things or many industries that can affect people on a physical, emotional, mm-hmm. mental, and spiritual level right now. With with loneliness being one of the number one epidemics in the world, I'm able mm-hmm. to affect that every day through a rumba box or a waltz or a tango. But it is deeper than that because if you dig beyond the dancing, more of that shows. So it's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that does sound amazing. And then, and so talk to me about the competition. So you're at a competition right now. Like, how does that work? What's that all about? So with ballroom dancing, you can do it socially, which is great too, or you can do it on a competitive side. And if you wanted to, you can compete every single weekend. <laughs> That's something that you wanted to do because wow. there's a competition every weekend. And it's break, it's broken down very similar to the learning levels. So it's your level, your age, your division. So it's not... 18 competing against 25 or right. 65 year olds. So it's mm-hmm. very structured too, but just kind of gives somebody goal. It gives some dancers goals. It, it gets that athletic side of it too, a little bit more of a sports feeling and you just check the box of physically no, going I've, to the highest I've level. Seen of on, I've seen it on TV and it sound it seems to me like, like it can be very physically challenging on, in certain, if, if you want it to be right, like the health side of things. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. I mean, it's it's can be high impact, low impact. It's weight bearing exercise, so it depends mm-hmm. on how much weight you're bearing and you know, like putting into your movement. 
not necessarily how much mm-hmm. you weigh or anything, but it's it's more joint and flexibility through the body. Mm. So it can be as intense or not intense as you want, but it's pretty cool. Mm. That's awesome. How do people get started? Like, how do they get started with this? Like, they're going to listen so to this people, show. They're going to be like, yeah. what, is, what is this ballroom dancing? I want everyone to, like, how, how do people get started in this? Well, I would say, obviously, first having the desire for it, an interest, right? Mm-hmm. Like an inter- interest in learning anything. And then most of the time we will have people inquire online or call up the studio and they just come in for basically an introductory offer. So just like in anything, you can say mm-hmm. consultation, you can say orientation. Where's your studio? Where you are you say, located? We're actually in Sarasota, Florida, but we have mm. 247 studios in the United States. Mm. That's amazing. And fun fact, we actually grew during COVID, which like we opened more studios in 2020 than we have ever. Wow. But how does that That's, even work? <laughs> I I have no idea. <laughs> that, yeah, that, that's amazing. I didn't even think about that. That's I guess people were looking and they were like, ah, oh, this is good. I, I can see why, actually, now that I think about it. that I didn't think about it at that time, but that would have been a cool thing to do for sure. And how does... <laughs> How did the and and is this like I don't I don't know so just is this like a franchise yeah. model? Do you buy into franchises? Are you like like yeah. or how does this whole model work? Like so for because because there's yeah. also a big entrepreneurial segment that listen to this this show that maybe they want to take classes, maybe they want to look at the opportunity. I don't know. Absolutely. So each studio is its own franchise, right? We're mm. little franchisees of a franchise. So we buy in basically that way, and that gives us the Fred Astaire name, the Fred Astaire curriculum, mm-hmm. the, the marketing to it, the, the technology behind it, the seminars, just access to everything that he kind of put in place in 1947, but obviously has upgraded now. Wow, this has been around since 1947. I, knew, I know the name, I know 19- the brand, but I didn't, I didn't realize that. That's amazing. It's great. Yeah, what a great we were franchised many... before McDonald's. <laughs> what? That's awesome. How many yeah. students? I'm trying to just, is one number, like students? I don't know. I don't know if it's in your promo uh, or anything else like that. I'm like, geez, there must have been a rhetorical question. That's an unfair question. <laughs> but, but I'm just trying to think to like, geez, how many students have been through this and how many lives affected? It's amazing. I know. It's, well, being here currently in Las Vegas and mm. in a ballroom mixed with people of all walks of life and all abilities and all desires and dance levels, we're all sharing the same passion of mm. wanting to dance and get better and want to show it and express it. So, I mean, I would say right now we have, we have 18,000 entries. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean 18,000 participants, yeah. but this is the biggest number of attendees we've had in many, many years. So wow. it's pretty huge. So being in the ballroom has kind of definitely re, re-inspired that side of, wow. The there energy are must be insane. Am I wrong? Oh, like the energy true. must be true. insane. It's like 6 a.m. and you're like, what are you doing? Why are you clapping so loud? <laughs> it's still 6 a.m., <laughs> which can't help it. <laughs> you got Smooth Santana playing and you're like, clap, clap, clap. <laughs> Oh, Tiana. Well, hey, I appreciate you taking some time out of out of your schedule. I know you're at the you're at the Super Bowl of ballroom dancing right now. Yeah. So thank you for taking <laughs> some time out. If somebody wants to to follow up and learn more or to connect with you and your team, how do they do that? How do they follow your journey? Yeah, absolutely. So com is our overall franchise page. And then each person can individually drop where they're located. So if you're located in Sarasota, Florida, absolutely, we're the number one studio for you. But we have studios all over. So you start by going to the main page, com, and then we can break it down. And then each studio will let you what's best and how to get started. Wonderful. And for everybody listening, just so we'll put the links in the show notes. So you can just click on the link and head right on over. And speaking of the audience, if this is your first time with Mission Matters and you haven't done it yet, make sure you hit that subscribe or that follow button because this is a daily show. Each and every day we're bringing you new entrepreneurs, we're bringing you new stories and hopefully new inspiration to help you along in your journey as well. So again, if that sounds interesting, hit that subscribe or follow because guess what's going to come tomorrow? That notification because we got another episode for you and tiana um wishing you the best of luck and have have so much Thank fun you. in vegas at, at uh, the fred astaire <laughs> competition and um, i'm a little jealous i'm in the studio i'm not getting that well i got to talk to you today that's amazing so have a great yeah, rest of your, you. have a great rest of your trip and also the srq women's conference have, have a great trip there yes. too. so thank you looking forward to that it's been wonderful thank you so much adam